Hey guys, I want to welcome you again to our midweek uh, study where we look, uh, we're looking at Psalm 107. Uh, and our desire also has been to, uh, to go through Psalm 107. And we've done this uh, more than once. This is our third time going through Psalm 107. Uh, because for us as a core value, we say we're people united, changed by Jesus, but we're also people united by Jesus. But united by Jesus because we all have totally different stories of redemption. But we've all, we all still sing of God's redeeming power and his steadfast love. So, uh, so today uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm 107 verse mm. 4 to 9. But before we do that, my name is Raphael. I'm Karis. And Karis, do you mind reading for us um, verse 4 to 9? Sure. Some wandered in the desolate wilderness, finding no way to a city where they could live. They were hungry and they were thirsty. Their spirits failed within them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He rescued them from their distress. He led them by the right path mm. to go to a city where they could live. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all humanity. For he has satisfied the thirsty and filled the hungry with good things. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so, so Karis, what are some of the things that stand out for you here? Um, usually, like, uh, obviously, we're looking at this, and then we see there's an issue described. There's a, there's a rescue that's there, and then there's also mm -hmm. a remedy. Like, yeah, what, what are just some of the things that stood out for you here? Well, I think the first thing is that you can see in verse 4, that they have no city, they have nowhere to live. Mm -hmm. And then we see in verse 6 that they're crying out to the Lord and he rescues them and leads them to a city where they could live. Yeah. So I yeah. think that's a really beautiful depiction, right? Like yeah. here they are with nothing and then he's leading them into a space and they're wandering. Mm -hmm. So I think we've all gone through phases of life <laughs> where we've wandered yeah. in the wilderness. So... That would be the first thing that I would pull out. There. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and and this is also just like a metaphor of of salvation there, mm. like in which you you get to see. Uh, once again, we keep on having to go back. Who gets to make it into the community of the redeemed? Uh, what are those people looking like? And here we're getting to see that, like, um, in there you find wanderers. Mm. Um, people who who actually maybe just like would say i was lost mm. um you know i was lost and i was wondering i was looking everywhere and and i love at least how the new living translation kind of just like says it um and i love some of these paraphrases i read them devotionally a lot um and 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 this is what it says it says this like some wandered in the wilderness lost and homeless, mm -hmm. uh, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died. Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. And he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, mm -hmm. uh, to a city where they could live. Um, and mm -hmm. let them praise the Lord for his great love, for his wonderf wondrous, wonderful things he has done for them. He satisfies the thirsty he fills the hungry with good things. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's it's now looking and saying that like there are some, and that word some is all going back to verse 3 there, uh, where it's actually like, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He has redeemed them from the power of the four. Mm -hmm. What is actually the power of the four there? It is actually like having a sense of just no just lostness hmm. like a sense of like it, it's just a sense of being an orphan mm -hmm. a sense of no belonging right yeah. like it's just like they, that's the picture there where at the end of the day like it's like they're lost in the desert um and, and it just kind of reminds you of it reminds you of the children of israel yeah absolutely. like lost in the desert like going in circles for four, for 40 years and just, you know, and they're going mm. over and over and over again. 
and then we get to see them um and they're thirsty and this is where we see um you know they're thirsty and and but at the same time it's actually what are they looking for they're looking for a place they can call home mm. yeah um a place they can call home a place where they can um you know where they move from wilderness to home uh a place where they move from being hungry to being fed the place where they move from being what thirsty uh and then just to a place where they can you know yeah yeah where yeah. they're satisfied yeah and filled with good things yeah i think too like when i when i see this like i see in my own life the times where my sin has led me into spaces of wilderness yeah you know where like i i when you were talking i was thinking about this time where i was in like high school and i remember i i desperately just didn't want to submit to my parents rules i think i had just turned 18 and i thought i know how to live life yeah like a lot of <laughs> 18 year olds think you know like i'm an adult i want to do what i want and I remember, like, essentially running away from home and staying with a friend. Mm -hmm. And it was so miserable. And yeah. I remember just longing to go home, mm -hmm. you know. Like, but I'm sure pride was saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, I just think there's those times where you, like, we think that we can, like, we can sustain life in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But it says you're hungry and you're thirsty and your spirit is failing within you. Yeah. And that is essentially what sin does is it creates this space where we think we could live. Like we're looking for that city on our own. Yeah. And yeah. we can't sustain it. Like we can't sustain our lives. Like we mm -hmm. need Jesus. And then it's when they cry out to the Lord in their trouble that he rescues them. The big word being he rescues them, not us. <laughs> not us. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that, that's, and I love at least how you, you, you're seeing the whole idea of being lost and you're just being, you're being corroded on the inside. Like, and I love at least you painted the, you, that whole idea that like the soul is faint. Mm. So you see like there's this like, there's this hunger, there's this thirst, but then now it's going inside. Like where it's literally like, um, it's it's a very very it's it's a very dire circumstance um and they can be i would say like there is no this is a very frightful kind of mm -hmm. picture mm -hmm. of like this is what it looks like to be in a desolate place mm -hmm. um and, and it just leaves us now with with recognizing that like and these are the kind of people also God wants to save. Oh, yeah. Like, and so for me, like, any time I felt lost, and, and I even mentioned that um, recently in a sermon, uh, and I was meditating on this, of being lost, and just thinking about, like, all the places, all the places where it's like, help is over here, mm. you're going there. Like, it's like, because <laughs> I was just thinking about, like, like um you know help is with the witch doctor you go there hmm. and then you don't find it um or you just you don't know if it's gonna work yeah. uh you know and it's just like going from one place to another to another uh there is no I, I can look back and say because of just like the shifting of households um you know every single place like in africa we don't have foster care homes we have relative relatives mm -hmm. take care of you mm -hmm. uh and if i can count how many of them i ended up at um i think probably maybe 12 of them but like this is for a season and but when you are there and you and I was just thinking about it, like, and when you were there, the you wanted just the same privilege as the children of the home, but you mm -hmm. didn't, you didn't, because it wasn't home, you didn't feel like you had them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you could be hungry, or you could be thirsty for something, you could be, but 
I, I remember the hardest thing was to ever, even if you've been told, hey, whatever's in the fridge, you can get. Like, even if you like, and unless you were told, like, it, it just like, it was one of those things where I just got used to just being in a house and leaving in a house and never express that I was hungry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it was in home. And but when you now started longing, it was like I don't care what home looks like. I know mommy's sick. I know I know they don't have this. I know but I would rather be home and be experiencing hunger than be in exile somewhere. Cause mm -hmm. that's just like I describe mm -hmm. those as exiles. Yeah. Like it's just like, okay, oops, you gotta go over here. But home was a place where at least you could cry out mm. and be heard. And at least they could tell you, hey, there's nothing. Instead yeah. of actually just like, okay, <laughs> the day you woke up and there was no breakfast and you were never, there was no roll call for breakfast. So therefore yeah. breakfast wasn't there. And I just got used to that. And even up mm. to now, like I've struggled sometimes eating three meals a day just simply because of that. But mm. you think about this and just think about, and this is also just like where even foster care and adoption have become very important um, to, to us because mm. the metaphor of salvation is also adoption. Yes. Right? Like it's like yes. salvation, justification, but then the end of that is adoption. Mm. What is actually the result of that? The rescue there, they cried out from the Lord, mm. right? They cried out to the Lord and he heard them, Right. Uh, and there's this thing like where it's like they cried out, he heard them, uh, and then you see now um, when you, when you start looking through that and you're seeing, you know, they're crying out in their trouble. He mm -hmm. delivers them from their distress, and he leads them straight away to a city to dwell in, mm -hmm. where there's just something beautiful about that, where. Some of us, when we start talking about our salvation, what do we talk about? Safety. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I love being in Jesus because <sighs> home. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Yeah. It's just like that's that's a like when we think about God, we think about security, safety, like instead of all these. Uh, and that's actually the right. metaphor here um, of, of just being led to that place of safety, being led to that place where where at least you 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 have everything that you need and and here you get to see all the necessities of life mm -hmm. that I've just painted there yeah. um and he gives them water gives them and then so that's actually all implied in there uh that like he gives them those things um and yeah so there is that safety but then it's actually like you're moving from a place of just barrenness to a place of actually like abundance. Yeah. And that barrenness, like you were saying, some of it is created by God because he wants to show you that like, hey, apart from me, you cannot survive. Right. But then you come now to a place of like, oh, okay, there's this safety. Mm. Um, yeah. So so it, it's just like, it's, it's amazing just to see that like where it's like the rescue comes in uh, and that re rescue comes in. I was thinking of Romans chapter seven where the psalmist says, uh, where, where the, the where Paul says, when I try to do this, I, I think the I is described almost like more than 20 times in there. Mm. Meaning that like what's happening there is like I, 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 I. And then at the end he says, wretched man I am. Mm. Who shall save me? Thank God. And then he basically says, thank God through Christ our Lord. Mm. Like, right? Like, at the end of the day, that's yeah. what you were saying there, where it's like the who of your salvation is so important. It's not it us. Is. It's him, it you know? Is. I don't know. Yeah. What, 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 what you got there? I just like how it says that he led them by the right path mm -hmm. to go to a city where they could live. Yeah. And yeah. I think sometimes, like, it's, like I said before, we want to create a space for ourselves to a place yeah, yeah. where... You know, we, we want to find the city on our own, mm -hmm. but that path is desolate. It's yeah. going to, to leave us in a failed space, in a lonely space. Yeah. In that space where 
we don't feel like we belong. But then I think when we look at it, him leading us down a right path, yeah. there's a sense of rest there. Like mm-hmm. when I see this, he's rescuing and then he's leading them down a right path good, yeah. where they can live. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of like, you know, as a as a parent who has done foster care and adoption, yeah. like I think that ultimately the children in my care, what they really want is that equalized space yeah, where they yeah. have a sense of belonging, where mm-hmm. they have a sense of a seat at the table where they're not different. Where yeah, they're yeah, that's in good. Equal standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think... You know, this is what we see that that Jesus is he elevates us to a mm-hmm. space. And I just think that's so beautiful that God is not only giving leading us in a right space down the right path. then and then he's just doing wondrous works, it says mm-hmm. like and I love that. I yeah. There's so much yeah. hope in that. For those of us who have felt on the outside as wanderers, like there is, he's creating a space of belonging. And not only is he giving you belonging, he is also then expounding on that and doing wonderful works for all, all humanity. No, that's good. That's, yeah, that's, that's amazing that at least you point that out, like where, where there is that, a place of equality, a place of like where, um, and that's what the church needs to look like. Mm -hmm. Um, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Uh, Let them speak up. Like, and, and that in there, there has to be some people who, who Mm -hmm. really then like, you know, and we have to now create, make sure that the church is now a place that is home for them, Mm -hmm. that is safe for them. Um, one theologian say this like and this is this is like um and 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 feel free to comment after this <laughs> like uh someone said you belong to this group of people if you have done something wrong to fit in hmm. right like and if in social functions or places where there are people you strategically sit alone feeling sorry for yourself and hoping someone will notice and take pity on you. Hmm. Um, you long for love, but can't seem to find uh, someone or keep finding the wrong someone, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you often feel empty and wonder why you can't seem to find joy uh, that the others have. You think your life is a waste and it would be better if you had not even been born. And this are mm-hmm. let lots of people mm-hmm. go through this. You yeah. try to find satisfaction in in other things like let's say pornography, shopping, working a lot or food or mm-hmm. like any other mm-hmm. experiences. Like those are people that just like just usually don't seem to ever have to contentment in where they are they just mm-hmm. always want to be on the move yeah um and then yeah so so it's one of those things like like where yeah this person was was actually describing these circumstances and saying hey you might belong to this group if that's actually what what you are mm-hmm. like and this is like even going towards addiction going to what then that does is that it just tells you what is that person searching for mm. They're searching mm. for home. Yeah. They're searching for safety. They're searching for, you know, hey, yo, did you have any yeah. thoughts towards that? Or do you have yeah. any other <laughs> scenarios to add I mean, to I, the, the kind of group? Yeah. I just think that's so true. I think that we see that in in this time of life more than ever, where it's where we're constantly disconnected, but thinking we're connected. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, we mm-hmm. look at, like, oh, I have this many followers and I'm posting these things and I look so happy, but yeah. on the inside people are broken and longing for true connection yeah. and we're we're failing at that because we don't. We don't. It's hard to live in community and it's yeah. hard to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And I think so many people then, because they have an emptiness, because mm-hmm. they feel like they're on the outside, are like you read, filling that with a bunch of other things like yeah. constantly looking for something to fill the void of home yeah. like a home with christ mm-hmm. a home space that is safe and 
you know, that feeling of love. But I see that also, you know, in one of our adopted children where yeah. it's a constant pushback. Like she's in a space yeah. that's safe, right? Like she's in a, and she's loved. But I think there's times where because of these things that you read about, we believe otherwise. Yeah. Right? We believe mm-hmm. that we're not lovable, mm-hmm. that we don't deserve God's love, that we don't, why would he want to meet with us because of the yeah. darkness of our sins and, you know, where there's this constant pushback. And I think that's where the church has to like fill in that space yeah. and be the ones to pursue and show Jesus Christ by the way we pursue the lonely and the hurt and the ostracized and the addicts and, yeah. you know, all the things where we we are the hands and feet of Jesus. But that's that good. needs work. It yeah. needs work. And yeah. I think that's where the church has to has to step into that space and be self sacrificing where we're like, what does it look like to build a home and a safe space yeah. for those people in my sphere of influence? Yeah. <laughs> and and it actually just then goes into the whole idea that like um you know, they there's a ton of resources uh, that talk about the fact that like there's a way in which even in within Christianity we can we need to actually recognize like in our sanctification journey like why did I act that way mm. oh wow I was starting to act like an orphan mm-hmm. when I have a parent because mm-hmm. I love at least watching those struggles you know with my adopted children where there's almost like that like where it's like you know I love you, but every now and then they will still act like orphans. Mm. And but we do that in the spiritual as well. Like it's where real. it's like and then but but what we have to do is to continually say, Hey, this is home for you. I love you and I care for you and 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 we have to constantly do that. Mm. And it's easy to do that at home, but sometimes even in the church like when people sometimes like default back to that orphan mentality, we need to now press in again and then just again and again. Mm -hmm. And that's now like where it's like, we tend to sometimes give up too too soon. But then at the same time as well, that vulnerability that you're talking about, it needs, um, it needs a safety of some sort. Mm. Um, Because I remember like, when i became a christian i think i moved into that house uh my cousins uh, my aunt invited me to come stay with my cousin i moved into that house i stayed there for a good almost three to six months still just going i i was just lost Mm. like and this time now like i'm running to the bottle I'm waking up with tattoos I didn't know. That's actually <laughs> some of the things. I didn't know how I got them. Like, and just things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, where it's like, and I'm just kind of like, I'm trying to drown my grief. Mm. Um, and But I'm living in a house where, at first, I'm living there. We're in the same house. But I'm looking at my cousin, and he knows the Lord. I don't know the Lord. But I am literally like, and one of the things that he did for me, and this is like, um, you know, a lot of people usually like, you know, I like shoes. Mm. I do. I like, <laughs> <laughs> I like shoes and I keep them clean sometimes not because of just anything, but because of there was a time when I just had one pair of shoes. Mm. That's it. And you came home, you took it off, you put it, you put it away because you wore it only on Saturday because we're going to church on Saturday and only when you're going to school. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, and you kept that pair and it could literally like that. That's what it was. And I remember my cousin just saying, hey, I've got a pair of shoes here. He gave me and like so all of a sudden now I've got more than two pairs of shoes. Like and I'm just like, you know, and then, you know, he gave me clothes. He gave me like just lots of things. And then. In the midst of that, like safety is actually happening, mm. and uh, and I remember not only just that cousin, but all my other cousins. They've made it a point to make that a home for me. Mm. Um, and part of making it a home was that like they knew he wasn't stupid. He knew I was coming home drunk. Mm. They, it's just like, mm-hmm. 
but yet they they set a stage where like you know like they would play like i remember like i would play listen to all the the crude hip hop the snoop dogs the <laughs> the Tupacs, the Eminems, the Method, look, the Wu Tang clans and all that stuff. That's how, like, I had like all these rap tattoos on me. But my cousins set a stage where there would a lot of times I would walk in there and they were playing Christmas music, Christian music, in the house, mm. and like, and then eventually one day we sat on the couch and then. And then they were like, Raf, what's your story? Hmm. And my cousin, her name is Patricia, said, what's your story? They sat down and lit- for the first time I felt heard. Mm-hmm. First time I fe- felt seen. Uh, and I remember weeping. like we- And I'm talking about like weeping because I just was so bottled up on the inside. Weeping. And then as we're sitting on that couch... My other cousin, Peggy, he's the one who's like, and he shares the gospel with me. It totally blows my whole world. And then for the first time, I felt home. Hmm. And and that's actually what the remedy is here. Hmm. You know, and for the first time, it was like almost like clear all the other things. I now had food, and I could walk to the fridge, and, and then I had, hmm. and now like all... Like, I was having this, like, and I remember even my other cousin, like, their sister Faith had come from the UK, and she went and bought me a whole bunch of new clothes for the first time having, like, not a hand-me-down. Like, you know, and I'm just looking at that, and I'm like, okay. And then from there, the stage was open. Meet the the physical needs first. Mm -hmm. Safety, I needed a home. Because if I had not... If my aunt had not asked me to go there, I actually was on, was that week I was planning on actually leaving and going and crossing the border, going, and it, people don't make it alive across going there. Um, so my aunt invited me in, and it was actually like watching the Lord do a new work inside. Mm. And I remember those days, because when I say yes to Jesus, it was almost like taking breath for the first time. Like, I remember trees were new for the, like, they Mm. look new. It was new life. And that's what the remedy is here. For he satisfies the longing soul. Mm. And the hungry he fills with good things, right? And you just get to see that, like, this is what he does. He satisfies and he, and, and, and uh, for me, if I was to actually maybe say that's, that's probably like the place where I would put myself Hmm. This is uh, some for me. This is where I'd put my salvation story at, where I'm like, those circumstances might have been different, but like that's what I felt there. Like where at the end of the day, it's like, okay, you know, he satisfied me. He he led me to the right, <laughs> the right path, he, you know, and then he satisfied that he filled the hungry hmm. with good things. Hmm. And what is the good things? It's actually now like. And you see that story over and over. The woman at the well. Oh, yeah. She's been hungry. And she's like, hey, where's your husband? You're right. <laughs> you don't have one because you've gone to seven of them. Mm-hmm. Like, and then just, uh, but what is she hungry for? And Jesus satisfies her there. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, she's like, come see a man who told me everything but yeah. satisfied me. And all of them look at a satisfied person. And that's what I feel like. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know if you've got. That's really beautiful. Yeah, I love, I love how you, like, brought up the woman at the well because I think that that's so clearly a depiction of where we see like yeah. Jesus actually meeting that need for her, mm-hmm. actually seeing her. You know, yeah. he sees her, and then he meets the tangible need that she had to be known. Yeah. And to like be filled in that way. And I think that's what so many people around us are actually looking for. That space of like where there's a, a creation of like felt safety mm-hmm. so that they can unveil their soul. Yeah. Like your yeah. cousins created for you a space where you are being seen and known, where your needs are being met, where you're developing trust. Yeah. You know, 
because I think it's hard when people want to just like like put the gospel out there, which there's nothing wrong with that. But like if <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. have like if you don't know their story, if they haven't if you haven't asked them and you're not sitting with them in the sorrows of their life where you're not walking in that wilderness, mm -hmm. like you can't help lead them to a Christ who's going to rescue them from their distress and put them on the right path and then fill those aspects of their life where they're satisfied he's satisfying the thirst and and filling them with with good things like mm -hmm. i think we have to be the catalyst to do that by what your cousins yeah did. yeah sitting with people mm -hmm. and opening ourselves to actually hearing their stories of vulnerability and then then approaching them with jesus yeah and saying he's yeah. the one who's going to sustain your life he's the one who's going to lead you to a space where you can live, where you can live in abundance. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what Christ wants. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see. He's not just like, now you have a home. He's saying, no, now I'm buying you new clothes and I'm giving you new shoes and I'm making sure you have every ounce of food and yeah, more. Yeah, just making like, that equality, yeah. the belonging piece you were talking about. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> that's And that's, we often forget, we often forget where is John the Baptist, the forerunner, when he is announcing that the good news is coming? He's in the desert. Mm. And it's pretty interesting that like he stays in the desert and people are coming to him there as a metaphor mm. of actually like, hey, this is what your spiritual condition looks like. Mm. And <laughs> you know what I mean? A voice That's crying so out in the desert. <laughs> Prepare yeah. the way of the Lord. A voice cries out in the desert. And that's actually like where mm. he's baptizing in the desert. And literally like what happens when Christ gets baptized? He walks into the desert where we fail more than mm. anything, where we, where we are, where we are wandering, where we're lost. And then he comes, he proclaims good news to us. Um, and, and what I was going to read for, for us is just like at least... Like, this is the picture of just like a reversal. Look at verse mm. 35. Um, look at verse 35. You want to read 35 to 37. Um, and it's just kind of like the beautiful picture of what then God does to, to people with desert experiences, especially through the gospel, mm. right? Yeah. So here's verse 35. He turns a desert into a pool, dry land into springs. He causes the hungry to settle there and they establish a city where they can live. They sow fields and plant vineyards that yield a fruitful harvest. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's, that's now like where at least like it's like, because we can say they are redeemed, but what's happening? Mm. God comes in and he's a God of reversals. Mm -hmm. Like, And this is actually yeah. like, if we were to look at foster care, adoption and all that stuff, we're wanting to see reversals. Every now and then we see it. And we're just like, yeah. oh, wow, you're thriving. You, all your teeth are growing. You didn't have <laughs> any, right? Like, <laughs> you know, that's cool. But at the same time, that's actually like where it's like, you know, he turns deserts into pools of water. Mm -hmm. That's like, and then a patch land into springs of water. Like, and the, there, he lets the hungry there dwell there. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's actually, like, so beautiful because, like, they're there. And, but what is actually happening? There's now a city there. But it's no longer just a city. It's actually, like, the presence of actually the vine, the vineyards, and fruitful yield. The vineyard is joy. And, like, mm. it, there's just so much going mm -hmm. on there. They're no longer hungry. There's this, like... It's a season of prosperity, which is actually really what the gospel is meant to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes and turns our deserts into what? Into places. And it's pretty interesting to see. I don't know if you remember in John 5, when Jesus is healing the guy at the pool of Siloam. Like, and this guy's been there for, for so many years. Mm. And he's been trying to just get in and he cannot. And he's like, I've got no one to take me in there. And it's just like, it's like, mm. that's a desert. You yeah. crippled for 30 something <laughs> years and literally there. Mm. Like, and he just like, and he says, get up, take mm -hmm. your mat and walk. And he's like, you know, like you, you don't yeah. even need that. You got, you got me. And yeah. there's just like a beautiful, if you start walking into gospel stories with this kind of reversal in mind, 
it, it's just mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. It's mind blowing to think about like then. And no wonder why, like what's, you know, once again, John announces Jesus and Jesus comes. Where does he do the first miracle? At the wedding in Cana, what mm. does he do? He multiplies wine. And what does he, he do? Does. Joy is here. Like, and not only that, like he's coming to establish a new city. This is just like gospel themes everywhere. Like yeah. that are just yeah. like so beautiful. Um, Very beautiful. Beautiful to think through. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you help, please? <laughs> Thank you, oh. Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, almost, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just kind of, the hand looks like it's going to get pinched. Yeah, we were just. She's like, I want to record. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> we, all right, we get. So, <laughs> verse 40. Okay. So, verse 43, and this is what I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, verse 43 says that this is not only just a thanksgiving psalm, it's also a wisdom psalm. Mm. And it's meant to, to now take us as a church. So, we are going through this as a result. Like, we've gone through this psalm a couple of times as a church because we want to see this kind of community mm. built here. And But it actually just says that let he who is what? Whosoever is wise. Let him attend to these things. Listen and obey. That's a word mm. Shema there. Like listen and obey and let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Mm. Consider it and then create an environment. How can then the church become a home? Mm. How can the church then become a platform where God's steadfast love can, like where those who are, yeah, so so those who are lost, who are wandering, can actually find this, and then actually find renewal like this. Uh, yeah. So, th what what are some of the thoughts like? Because I know this is very. Now I have so many. I know this is so important, <laughs> but at the same time, that's the whole reason why we got into foster care. Yeah. This is the whole reason why we got into, because we yeah. believe that. Like, and at the same time, you walk into city church. There's welcome home. This is mm -hmm. actually what inspired that. Mm. Like, welcome home. How can the church do that? Like, yeah. I mean, I think I think we have to attend to our hearts, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we have to prepare our hearts to look like that of Jesus. Yeah. And the fathers. That's good. And he is constantly pursuing. Like, I think of the story about, you know, the prodigal. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, the father is running to meet the wayward son and yeah. is that what we're doing as a church community mm. like are we running to people who may make us feel uncomfortable yeah or might yeah. not who are lost mm. and who want to return home yeah or you know i think there there is an aspect of the church where like we have to be prepared to be vulnerable and go outside of our comfort zone and make sacrifices. And yeah. if we can't make sacrifices, we can't create a home. Mm -hmm. Like, we know what it's like to, I mean, we sacrificed to do foster care, yeah. right? Like, yeah. our it was a sacrifice for our home, for our biological children, for, for you know, whenever we say yes mm -hmm. to something, we're saying no to something else. Yeah. So I think we have to weigh the cost. Like, it when I say yes to this, does it have kingdom value? Yeah, that's and good. And that's where I think we really have to, like, as the church, be be prepared to pursue people in in the Lord's faithful love. Like, show them that. And then, like I said, be, be ready to sacrifice to do that. I think people that's need good. to see that sacrificial love where we're willing to go out of our way to embrace them and bring them home. That's good. That's good. It's like someone said, come home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the I like how at least like you you um you're pointing to exactly what our core values are: gospel, immerse yourself in God's faithful love for you mm. and for me through Jesus Christ. That's what He has done. He has come to execute redemption for us. So immerse yourself in actually like so. Be grateful for where God has the what is has mm -hmm. done. Immerse yourself. But then at the same time, like, we have to now, as a community, we're a community of the redeemed. We, mm. we are a redeemed community. So let's fight for that unity. Let's fight for 
but like at the same time let's fight to make sure that like those stories are things that like we're sharing those stories mm. but at the same time we're welcoming those stories like like if someone has a totally different story than you welcome them and but especially those like and but what it will take this is what like for that community to happen it's not going to be like a well for so and so who wasn't struggling with an orphan mentality or who wasn't lost in the desert it was so easy for them to assimilate mm. but it's so hard for this person it means that like don't take everyone and like put them in a cookie cutter batch processing kind of deal some people it will spend you will have to spend a little bit more time mm. assuring them their home yeah like Absolutely. and then th that's actually like how long will it take jesus said he took you know it, it's just like it's one of those things where it has to be an enduring love mm -hmm. his steadfast love endures forever mm -hmm. and we have to now like n not put limits to how far we can pursue people to make them actually like feel home yeah um and then at the same time as well like um and then do it in in a way where we're welcoming, but also as well, like experience it in a tangible way, like foster care, adoption, um, <laughs> we'll leave it there. Mm. Uh, and then as well, like as a church, then um, immerse yourself in the fact that like, man, he's a God of reversals. Mm. And if he reverses this way, who comes to mind when you hear this kind of story? Who comes to mind when you think about someone who's lost in the desert? And then immerse yourself in the fact that, like, man, I pray that they would cry to the Lord, like that that God will give you, serve them, love them, walk with them, that God will give you an opportunity to share them with them where their help is, is at. And then at the same time, just stay long in their lives and mm -hmm. do around, like with the desire of wanting to see that reversal happen. Yeah. Like, and that's now like where Jesus called us to be what? Fishers of men. Fishing for men is not, it's not like, it's not <laughs> just like, you don't, you, it don't, doesn't bite at first endeavor. Like the fr that passage where he says, come, I will make you fishers mm -hmm. of men. They had spent a whole night casting, Caris. Mm -hmm. Like, and even Peter yeah. kind of has a sarcastic saying, it's like, yeah. Lord, what? We've spent a whole night casting out yes. here. Like, and then just one of those things, and we caught nothing. But it might be like that morning cast of like throwing it, and all of a sudden now you can catch. That's probably how you catch orphans. Mm. That's how you catch those who yeah. are lost. And immerse yourself in the heart of Jesus. He's the only one who says, when Zacchaeus, who's lost basically as well, like in some way, but then at the same time I think his picture is also in there somewhere um in in the later part of Psalm 107 but Jesus says I came to seek and save those who are lost mm. and so therefore the church should also <laughs> I think our baptism stories need to be filled with those kind of stories yes that's really what it is yes. so anyway having said that Caris, like would you pray for us Absolutely. as we end thank you so much I think this was really good <laughs> I really enjoyed it yeah it's a uh, so many truth bombs I coming know. out of here. Uh, anyway, know. would you please pray for yes, us? Yes, I will. Jesus, I just thank you that we have the privilege of studying your word. God, that it is so applicable to our lives. Jesus, I just ask that you would give us the courage to share our stories with one another, that the redeemed of the Lord will say so, that we will be vocal, that we will make space by being vulnerable with our own redemptive stories that others will want to share their their path the path that they are on and god that we can lead them to you through that that we would continue time after time to throw down our nets and and fish god that we would not be turned away by not catching something immediately but that we would realize that the process of redemption can be lengthy and that we wouldn't give up but we would be faithful to bring souls to you um, that we would create a home for them and that we would weigh the cost and that we would make the sacrifice jesus we thank you for mm. what you taught us today and we just pray that we would carry that on in our lives in your name we pray amen 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 well thank you so much for joining us and we pray that this is 
uh, this is very, very beneficial for you. And, and you would join us in making our church mm -hmm. a place where those who are lost can find a home. Uh, God bless. Have an amazing week.